Hi everyone, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today, because a lot of people are demanding punctuation, I'm going to start with the comma. The comma is the most abused punctuation in composition writing because we are never taught the comma. We are never formally taught the comma. We just pick it up on the way. Many of us when we read, we notice the comma and then we learn how to use it. But we are never really sure. So today I thought I would start with a comma so that you don't put commas everywhere and you don't put commas randomly. You know why you are putting a comma. Okay? It's very important because in all good written academic work, punctuation is critical. You can create an extremely poor impression if you put the commas in the wrong place. Although it looks very small, just a little mark, it's not small. So pay attention and let's see what and where and how we use this comma. So let's look at that first sentence, let's eat grandma. Now you're wondering why she's saying let's eat grandma, how can we eat grandma? That would make us cannibals, wouldn't it? So what's wrong there is the comma is missing. So you see when the comma is missing, so what you're trying to say is let's eat. So you're calling out to grandma and saying let's eat grandma. That's very different from let's eat grandma. So if you don't put the comma, it will look like you want to eat grandma. Look at the second one. I love cooking my family and my dog said she said. So again this makes her into some kind of a gaulish person who is going to cook her family. But if I put commas, so I want you to stop for a minute and put the commas yourself. You should have put this, I love cooking, my family and my dog, she said. Now in that second sentence there is quite a lot of learning there. In the first sentence, let me tell you that this comma here is not a comma, that mark there is an apostrophe. So don't confuse it with a comma. When you put apostrophe S, yes, you put it for if you say Roshan's bag, apostrophe S, yes, not comma, okay? So that's not a comma. And these marks are speech marks, not to be confused with a comma. They are speech marks or quotation marks. You do not say they are commas. Now I love cooking, my family. So you are listing things, aren't you? The very many things that you love. And my dog. Now they are completely different things, but you are still listing them. Now this comma here before the end is called an Oxford comma. When you put a comma before an end. In a lot of places, you will they will tell you not to put that comma, which is also fine. So there is nothing wrong in putting the comma before that and or not putting it. Both are okay. But normally when you have a lot of equal things, you do not put that comma and we shall see that. So the listing comma, so we did quite a lot of work with just those two sentences, two, two jokes actually. So the listing commas are when you make lists. So when you have a lot of nouns together, three or more nouns, you want to separate them from one, one from the other. So you say we ate rice, curry and vegetables. Now you can say rice, curry, comma and vegetables or you can decide not to put it there. That is also fine. Okay. So we ate rice, curry. So you will notice that even when you speak, you pause, do not you? You do not say we, we ate rice, curry and veg, you do not go like this, you do not go like an express train. You say we ate rice, curry, so you are pausing. That pause when we write is expressed as a comma. You might do it with three or more adjectives. So for example, his lip was swollen, red and bleeding. Again, three adjectives, you might want to put it here or you might not want to put it there, it is fine. But you will put your commas because you are separating them. It was swollen, red and bleeding. So he must have got into a fight with somebody. 
but you are separating out these three adjectives and they are all describing the lip. They are all describing the lip. See, one noun is being described by three adjectives. So, that is one. However, this is an important note. When they are not equal adjectives, you cannot put that comma. For example, the two tall women came in. Now, when I say two tall women, that two is a number, the number of women and tall is the, they are both tall. But two and tall, you cannot put commas there and say women because they are not describing the same person. They are describing two different people and we are talking about two. So, here you cannot put two tall, it will become wrong. So, do not put for two tall or many large roads converged, many comma large, you cannot do this. So, be careful, look at your adjectives carefully and ask yourself are they describing the same thing, are they all equal or is one a number and one a size and one something else, then you have to be a little careful and do not put a comma there because it will go wrong. The third one is fanboys. Now, if you have not heard this acronym, F stands for for, A is for and, N for nor, B for but, O for or, yet and so. And the acronym is fanboys. All of these are what we call coordinating conjunctions. What is the meaning of a coordinating conjunction? When there are two equal clauses or what we call coordinate clauses and you join them together with a word, that is a coordinating clause. And all the coordinating clauses are these. So, if you remember fanboys, you know your coordinating clause, uh, conjunctions. Okay? So, let us look at the clauses. He went home. It is a complete sentence. And he ate lunch. Complete sentence. Remember, there must be the he. Eh? It must have a subject. Or bo all, both your sentence should, sentences should have a subject and a verb and they should be complete in themselves. If I want to join these two sentences, then I am going to need an and. Okay, I need an and, otherwise how will I join them? Otherwise it will look like he is somebody, he is Ram and this he ate lunch is Sham. They may not have any connection. I can even change this to Ram went home and he ate lunch to make it easier. So therefore, now we have got what is called a coordinating conjunction and here. Before these coordinating conjunctions, any fanboy conjunction, you must put a comma. Very important. Okay, this is one. Let us do another sentence. He ate lunch, so he was full. So, is another coordinating conjunction there. You can say, you can make another two sentences and use but or not or yet and join them together. They are all coordinating conjunctions and they join two coordinating independent clauses. Remember, independent clauses have a subject and a verb each. Okay? So, that is your fanboys. Fanboys always take a comma. After the first clause and before the fanboys conjunction, you need a comma. The third one is sentences starting with dependent clauses. So, after the dependent clause, you need to put a comma. What are the dependent clauses? In your complex sentences, you will have clauses that are not equal. So, here we saw two equal clauses. Now, we have got one clause that is independent and the other clause that is dependent on it, not independent. Now, those kind of clauses are called subordinate clauses. So, when you have a dependent clause or a subordinate clause starting the sentence, you will put a comma after it. So, if you come late, your pay will be cut. If is a subordinating conjunction. If I just say if you come late, it will not make complete sense and therefore, it is a subordinate clause starting the sentence. Whenever a subordinate clause starts a sentence, so it can be something like when I came home, subordinating, I saw the cupboards were open or I can say um, because 
he was mean to me doesn't make full sense i decided not to talk to him so it can be any of these but when it starts with a subordinating conjunction or a clause put a comma after it absolutely necessary okay the next one is appositives if you have not heard of this word appositives it's extra information that is given after a noun so after you write the noun you give some extra information about that noun and then you continue the sentence that extra information like for example mr smith comma the ceo of the company comma spoke well what you are basically saying is mr smith spoke well this is extra information i could have said ratna the girl in my school decided to leave decided to quit decided to um, go out of the school whatever so therefore that extra information should be separated by a by commas something to remember about appositives after transitional words and phrases now you've got when you when we write we have paragraphs right and when we want to join those two paragraphs together to make it into a whole so you got one paragraph one paragraph two paragraph three they need to be connected in some way isn't it you can't start on the paragraph with uh, mr malhotra and then suddenly start on somebody called uh, mrs rao and then suddenly do something in the third paragraph there needs to be a connection between this mr malhotra and this mrs rao there has to be some connection there has to be some connection in terms of place or time or result or something like that these are the words that we use at the beginning of the paragraph and they are normally adverbial they are either adverbial words or adverbial phrases so let's see how we have have them here so after transitional words and phrases always put a comma so if i say finally comma unfortunately comma eventually comma always when you start a paragraph see if you are starting with a phrase if it's a time phrase or a place or a consequence or whatever phrase you are using put a comma so finally or on the other hand we write this all the time on the other hand something else was happening or we might say after some time so you have a whole bunch of phrases that you start paragraphs with always put a comma after that phrase golden rule the next one is non defining clause separation like this appositive sometimes appositive is just repeating repeating another function of that noun that's all in a non defining clause you write unnecessary information completely unnecessary so if i say suman who lives in delhi is a law student what am i trying to say i am trying to say suman is a law student that is my main communication right now this who lives in delhi is, is unnecessary communication at this point but there are some clauses where this is very important suppose i say the boy in the striped shirt or who is wearing a striped shirt is the thief then that who is wearing a striped shirt is very important because that is how the police will identify him but in this case this lives in delhi is not really important because i'm talk go i'm talking about law and law students and law colleges and all that in the middle i've said something quite superfluous i'll put two commas so that it means that i can take this and throw it out and it will not make any difference to the meaning of the sentence very important non defining clause commas they come for a lot of examinations for punctuation the next one is to separate a prepositional phrase see for all these separations when you have something extra when you have something unnecessary you will put commas to separate it out so for example ratan with his red shoes went to school 
Now, Ratan with his red shoes went to school. They are two different, completely different ideas, isn't it? What you are basically trying to say is Ratan went to school. This with his red shoes, if you see this with, it's a preposition. Or you might have along with somebody. Ratan along with his friends went to watch football. That along with his friends is a prepositional phrase. With his red shoes, a prepositional phrase. In a red jacket, prepositional phrase. So, most of these prepositional phrases have really just give you some extra sort of uh, information, detail, add some color, that kind of thing. They are not completely necessary. So, you put commas because you can chuck it out and the sentence will continue as if nothing happened. So, I have done 7, I am going to continue with 8 and some more. Continuing with the 8th point, we have the narration commas. Now, when you are nar narrating something, several little pieces of information together, you need commas. The chief guest arrived, lit the lamp and went away. So, you need to separate these three separate actions. He arrived, he lit a lamp, it is a different action and then he went away. So, you use commas for when you are narrating something in a series of actions that you do. You could even talk about your day at the beach and all the various things that you did. The, if the clauses are a little long, if it is not just arrived but you have a longer clause then sometimes it is better to use a semicolon rather than a comma. But if they are just one word, you do not need to put a semicolon, use a normal comma. The ninth one is introduction commas. Very often when you introduce yourself, you say hello or hi or good morning and then you have to put a comma. If you are writing it, you need a comma. After anything, any introductory phrase, you need a comma and then you say I am Usha or good morning, how are you today etc. But after that good morning, there should be a comma. Okay? That is an introductory comma. Well, why do not you also look, this is bad. So, when you say look, this is bad, you, if you do not put a comma, it will be look, this is bad. It sounds odd. So, look, that is one action where you are saying look at this whatever has happened, something terrible has happened, you are saying look, that is a thought, this is bad. So, that is another thought. So, you need to separate them. Basically, commas are separating out your thoughts and various different things that have happened, just giving you more clarity. If you do not, then like let us eat grandma, it will become quite nasty. If you do not use commas properly in a legal document, you can even lose a lot of land, a lot of money because some comma is missing and the meaning has changed. So, commas are that important. Okay? The next one is direct address. So, suppose you say, Susan, can you get me a glass of water? So, after Susan, you cannot say Susan can get me. See, otherwise it will become Susan can you get me or if you do not have that you some other thing, then it will become Susan can get me, it will become a statement, it will, you will have problems. So, Susan, you are addressing her, Susan, can you get me a glass of water or dad, we need you now. So, you are calling out and saying dad, comma, we need you now. So, therefore, any address, when you are using it in writing, you need a comma. When you are speaking, you will call out, you will say dad and then you will pause naturally. We need you now. You won't say, Dad, we need you now. Nobody talks like that. But when you write, you do not, where is the pause? That pause that we have when we speak, that pause is missing when we write and that is where the comma shows us the pause. The next one is after yes or no, when you are going to continue the sentence. So, I might say yes, you win. Or you might say a longer sentence, you might say yes, I agree with you, I do not think we should go there. So, when you say yes, you do not continue it with yes, I, I agree with you in a straight line, 
you put a comma after yes because it's like affirming yes pause i agree with you or you might say no i'm not going or you might say no this is not fair no i'm not really happy with what who whom you're marrying it can be anything so after that no or yes you need a pause and that's a comma the next one is to show contrast so what's the contrast the victim let's say it's a murder scene the victim wore diamonds not pearls at to the party so the victim wore diamonds not pearls to the party so what is we need a comma there this not pearls is showing a contrast to diamonds if you don't put that it will become wore diamonds not pearls so it will people who don't know will wonder diamonds not pearls to the party it will confuse you a little bit suppose it had been something else not common like pearls and you haven't heard of it then you'll think all this is one so therefore to show contrast you need to have those commas the next one is in letters all of us write letters so this is an easy one emails salutation closure dear sir yours truly dear seema all that we will put a comma that's something that everybody knows sentences starting with prepositional or participle phrases so prepositional is in the end at the end of a long day um any any phrase that starts with a preposition is a prepositional phrase you will put a comma normally whenever you write even if you write today adverbial put a comma after some time comma so you will have this and then you have these participle phrases where you start with the ing word climbing the tree john saw a large blue bird coping with the stress the old lady coping with the stress comma the old lady suddenly fainted so after your participle phrase participle phrases if you have not seen you don't know what it is go and see the gerund and the participle phrases a participle and a gerund both end with ing when you start a sentence with it if you are going to continue it with a noun it's a participle phrase if you continue it with a verb suppose i climbing climbing the tree is a dangerous thing to do i don't need a comma because it's a verb climbing the tree i'm saying something is dangerous so i don't need a comma but if it's a participle phrase i need that comma okay very important <coughs> next is separating the name of a city country and state i live in mumbai comma india so this is if you don't have you can't write mumbai india otherwise somebody who doesn't know will think both these are the same so you need a comma all of us know this one addresses mrs pandit comma and whatever the address name street we write it and then we put comma 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 and then full stop in the end after the pin code everybody knows but that's one of the uses of the comma money you put these commas in order to tell you to read numbers isn't it 10000 30 million you need commas otherwise there are so many zeros you can't really read them you can't sit and count the zeros but this helps you to read the number very quickly the last one i've got is day date time she was born on monday comma march 19th comma 2010 so when you put a date also you put commas in order to separate the day the date and the year so that brings us to about 18 points where we use commas 18 or probably even more because i have not counted the participle and the separately it might be about 20 so imagine the number of uses we have for the comma you must go through it slowly this video you must look at it several times make notes write sentences and when you are writing pay attention to 
your punctuation, check whether you put comma. So, take any of your old uh, compositions or pieces of writing and use these rules and see whether you have put commas in the right places. That is the best way to learn. Very soon, the minute you write a phrase, prepositional phrase or an adverbial phrase or a linking word, you will put a comma naturally. You will not be able to not put it because it will make you uncomfortable. It will be that good. It is like speech marks and after said, closing it, we put a comma. All of that is those, those conventions, punctuation conventions will come to you naturally. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. You will get a lot in writing with ease and language with ease. Both books have got a lot of punctuation. So, buy them if you have not got them already. Until we meet again, I am going to put some exercises in the uh, description box for you to do. Do them and scroll down and you will get the answers. So, until we meet again guys, keep smiling.